Hey you, it's your host Sharon Lin and welcome back to Come Along. So today I'm so honored to be joined by two members of the Palestine national baseball team. Today we have Nader Ekmut. Hi, how you doing? Good, and Tariq Sugo. Hi, pleasure. Thank you so much for coming. And also I know it's your first time in Taiwan as well. So welcome, welcome. It's a great pleasure. And uh, before we get started, um, could you give us a brief introduction of you, where's home, and which position you play on the team, and who the coolest guy on the team is? Feel free to say it's you. <laughs> Let's start with you, Nader. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm Nader Hamoud. I play second base and outfield. Uh, I also am the media liaison of the team, and I'm a journalist uh, back home in the States, uh, in Chicago. That's where uh, my family moved from Palestine, and so that's where I'm at. I also sell insurance out there, and uh, I have two kids and a wife. Oh, okay. And who's the coolest guy on the team, according cool. to you? To, according to me? <laughs> Man, that's a toss-up. There's a lot of cool guys on the team. A lot of tryhards too. Okay. <laughs> would you like a name drop? Okay, skip that. Okay. But uh, but honestly, the coolest guy on the team, uh, to me, I would have to give it uh, to uh, Tarek Subah here. Aww. You know what I mean? He, he doesn't. It's, it's it's it comes naturally. You know, no trying. Just mm -hmm. he's a cool guy. Everybody vibes with him, and that's why he's our captain. Oh wow! Okay, so I told him he looked really good the other day. So that's he's <laughs> he's just he's just giving me the 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 compliment back. All right, Tarek, coolest guy on the team. Your introduction, please. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Tarek Subo, and uh, I'm from Silwad, Palestine, uh, which is in the West Bank, but I currently live in uh, Munster, Indiana, which is right outside of Chicago. Mm -hmm. I am the catcher for the national baseball team here in uh, uh, competing in Taiwan mm -hmm. for Team Palestine. Uh, my day job is a insur I'm sorry, uh, a real estate investor and broker. Uh, I was about to say insurance. That was my old life. See, I told you I was I was still tired. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, we're out here competing for the Palestinian national baseball team. And uh, I am also married with two children. Do you agree that you're the coolest guy on the team? No, I definitely <laughs> am not the coolest guy on the team. Uh, I would say, but the thing is, the coolest guy on the team, in my opinion, uh, is also a name Tariq, and his name is uh, Tariq Al Abur. Okay, shout uh, out to you. Hope that's a that's a fair one. I might. I'll, okay, yeah. I'll back that up. Okay, let's move on. I know that uh, Team Palestine is here because you won silver in the 2023 um, West Asian Baseball Cup in Islamabad, Pakistan, earlier this year. So congratulations, and it was Thank a you. tough game. Yeah, the, the the teams were good, but yeah. you came in in silver. Yeah, could you share with us what that win means for you and? How do you feel feeling, uh, cannot talk, being in Taiwan for the first time now? It was huge, our performance in Pakistan. I mean, just like in this tournament, people kind of didn't expect much from us. We're a new organization, yes. new federation. We started in 2017. So coming in second place was huge. I mean, we got our uh, revenge back in August. We played Pakistan in, in the States, in Chicago, mm -hmm. and we won that game. So now it's even one and one. And now we're going against each other for a third time yes. in the year. This will this one counts for a lot. And so we'll see who comes out, out on top. So we're really excited to be in Taiwan for that. And we're very happy to have you. And I know later this evening, you are going against Team Pakistan again. So good luck. All the best. I do hope you win. Sorry, fans of Pakistan. But like, you know, I'm biased and I, you know, <laughs> I'm not shy to admit, admit that. Nader, you're what people called a utility player, actually, from what I know so far. And you basically... Uh, that means you can do pretty much everything. Uh, and you're also the founder of the magazine Palestine in America. And Tariq, you're not only the catcher, but I know that you are the first person to hit the very first home run for Team Palestine in an international game. So let's talk about that for a sec. Could you share with us which year was this, what game, and what kind of pitch did you get? Sure. Uh, I remember that bet very specifically. Um, it was against uh, Sri Lanka, and their pitcher uh, was uh, throwing a lot of off-speed pitches, which means change-ups, breaking ball, things like that. And it's the first pitch he threw me uh, was a splitter. And I'm like, okay, like that was a pretty good pitch. I was expecting it again, but he ended up throwing a curveball. Um, and I, I definitely got all of it. I've, I've you know played baseball for a long time, and certain balls, when you hit them, you kind of know that it's got a good chance of leaving the yard. Mm -hmm. So you felt it. I, I mean, felt it. Of. Oh yeah. I felt it. I watched it and I just heard the anticipation from the dugout of my team. I just, wow, 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 you know, <laughs> so, mm. you know, it went over the fence and, um, 
I, I every time I tell the story, I always remember rounding the bases. I wasn't smiling or anything or wasn't happy or celebrating or cheering. I was just thinking if I was really hoping someone was watching back home, you know, especially my parents. Um, I knew my wife probably wasn't going to be watching because we have two young children. Yeah. And the time over there was like, I don't know, three, four in the morning. Like, I, no, no, no. I yeah. do not like that. Yeah, get your sleep. No. Get your sleep. So, um, and luckily after the the game, you know, I knew that um, I, I, I went saw my phone and I got a bunch of messages and they were watching it live. And, you know, I just it was so, so uh, important to me um, that I had some family watching is because, you know, I'm Palestinian, obviously, and I have a strong um, we have a strong history in, in our family traditions. And uh, my grandfather uh, was was uh, paying attention the entire time, too. And you know, keeping up with the scores and uh, I, I, I just wanted them to enjoy it like, like uh, as much as I did. So, and they did. So, yeah, that's really wonderful to hear. And now that you, I do remember that, that, that day, can I talk? Oh, remember that day? I remember it very well. I was asked to do the play by play for that game. Ah, okay. And I did the call on that home run and it was the most special moment in Palestinian baseball history. I agree. Yeah. And, it was the coolest moment. That's why he, he'll avoid being called cool. But doing that, <laughs> that alone, that mark. And then to top that off, he has the first RBI in this tournament's history for our team. He hit the game-winning double uh, against Hong Kong on Monday. This guy is so cool. So for me to call that, to be able to call that home run, mm -hmm. even though I got the where he was hitting it wrong, you go watch it on YouTube, I go right, center, left. But... It was the coolest moment of my life, and I didn't even hit the home run. So since we're talking about games, uh, let's talk about some games. So I know you're here in Taiwan. I know um, I have to make this very quick note and announcement. So in this conversation, I will refer to our team as Team Taiwan. Instead of the confusing, icky name, Chinese Taipei, that we're still stuck with. Um, so many reasons why we're still stuck with the name. I don't know how much you know about this, but long story short... We cannot use the name Taiwan. We cannot use our flag. We cannot be basically be whoever we truly are in most international occasions, including the Olympics and um, many reasons, as I mentioned. But one of them is if we do so, a certain country, <coughs> China, would be very displeased. So um, we're stuck with the name. But I refer to our team as Team Taiwan. So on that note, we have to talk about the opening ceremony. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So um, I watch highlights of that, and I know that you holds the Palestinian flag, you know, with so much pride. Also, your national anthem was played in the stadium. Could you share with us what was going through your head during the opening ceremony here in Taiwan? You know, what's really funny about that, and again, you know, what's, what makes this trip, and I'll start with this, what makes this trip so special is that there's so many stories that are within it. One of them being the opening ceremony. We had practice that day, um, which was important for us to do, obviously. And there was a certain time slot that we couldn't go around. So we, we had to have a very quick practice. We had to get dressed. We had to jump on the bus in a very, very short amount of time to drive the, what took about three hours to get to Taipei City because mm -hmm. of the traffic at that time. It was oh, Sunday. Yeah. yeah. So so the, from here, from Taichung all the way to Taipei City took about three hours. And the ceremony started at five o'clock, I think. We got to about 5.15. Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> rush, rush. Rushed, and um, we got dropped off where all the fans were coming in, so we get off the bus, and everyone's, Aww. you know, videotaping us, and we're just trying to hurry up <laughs> and get to the inside, and I just remember, you know, we, we had a bunch of flags with us, and, you know, we didn't see any of the other teams, so we're just rushed into the stadium, rushed through the tunnel, rushed onto the field, and all of a sudden, there's 20,000 people just Yeah, it was packed. So, it was packed, yeah. yeah. And everyone's just sitting so... Quietly, we're just walking in all <laughs> loud with our flags and our kofias, and we we walked in with our chest high, and we were very excited and happy to see you know this spectacle. Really, I mean, we didn't know what to expect. Um, the fact that there was so many people there, and you know, we we uh, had a grand entrance, as they like to call yeah, it. Yeah, I saw the highlight. We yeah. um, you know, it was just surreal. Honestly, I was smiling the whole time, and we saw our, our friends from Pakistan. Uh, while we were in uh, getting in line and they were waving to us and we're giving them you know salams and um the guys from the philippines were really receptive to us as well and all uh, japan even the japanese players took their phones out and started recording us Aww. and i'm like oh wow like, okay yeah. like these you know so 
it was just surreal. And the fact that, you know, we came in fashionably late was <laughs> a, a nice little, yeah. I don't know, caveat to the story. Yeah, yeah. nod to our culture, Arabic yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not, a nod to our culture. For but sure. I'd like to just add that, you know, having our flags like in that moment and having our kufiyas and representing Palestine, Palestine, especially right now, was a big important moment for us. Yes. Um, even when we take in uh, cabs and Ubers around town, you know, we try to talk to people about where we're from because a lot of people, sometimes they don't even know what Palestine is. Yeah. They don't understand uh, our plight and sometimes they don't understand the similarities that both Taiwanese and Palestinians have. Yes, which we will talk about later on. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the highlights and I, I saw it more than once and um, it, it actually it moved me to tears. And I used to watch a lot of baseball with my sibling. Now I mostly watch tennis, but, you know, for this interview, I it definitely dug up so many wonderful memories with my sibling. And um, so let's talk about some games. OK, first ever game you played here, December the 4th against Team Hong Kong, which you won, you know, three against one. What does this first win mean to you and to the team? It means a lot. Uh, we came in here. It, it was very similar to Pakistan when we got to Pakistan. Um, we're kind of like, uh, I, I don't know how to describe it, but the bell of the ball. Nobody really knows what to expect from us. We're young. Uh, every other team here has been here before, has done it before. We've never done it before. So I just imagine them thinking maybe we were an easier team. to. So it was important for us to come out and make a statement. And even though we didn't play our best ball, uh, we came out with a win, and I thought that was a huge learning moment for our team. A bunch of young guys playing together for the first time ever, and we beat a good, respectable Hong Kong yeah, team. Yeah. So shout out to them, but we're happy to get that win. <laughs> and because of that win, we're in the position that we are today, and hopefully we can finish in fifth place. Yes, please do. And we have to talk about the next game, which was against Team Taiwan, where I know, I know, okay, Team Taiwan hammer Team Palestine, and... I don't know, like, it's 19 to 0 in tennis. 0 is actually called a love. So 19, love. Um, again, it's a win with a lot of love from, from us. But, okay, listen, we're, we're pretty good. So <laughs> number, no, no, sorry, number five in the, in the world is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Five versus 55. Um, <laughs> but I will say, mm -hmm. you know, I'd rather keep talking about that first game. But yeah. yeah, okay. If we have to talk about the, the Taiwan game, uh, I will say this. You know, we are very short staffed. We came here with yes. only 18 eligible players to play on the field. And the, and the rosters, every single other roster has 24. Uh, if we were to get the full Palestinian, all the Palestinians that, that have been showed interest in playing for the Palestinian national team on this uh, in this tournament, then I think we would have put up a, a much better fight. The, the Taiwan game, we really uh, enjoyed it in the sense that the Taiwanese fans showed us respect. They really were. I mean, I thought that they enjoyed the game, uh, even did, though yeah. it was such a blowout. <laughs> um, they s noticed that we did try. We tried. Um, yeah. And I respect every single one of the teammates that, um, you know, pitchers, pi the guys that were pitching aren't pitchers. You know, that's that's kind of where we were. We're at that game because we want to give ourselves a chance. Uh, later on in the tournament so mm. we did get hammered as you like to say <laughs> but uh, i'm still yeah. proud of my teammates for you should, for, yes, for, you should. for going out there and competing against really an impressive a really impressive team i i wouldn't be surprised if they um you know took the whole asian championship this year oh, wow okay i remember that game i watched plenty of highlights and my friends who watched the games they said they, they remembered very w with so much love because they remembered um, even though you lost Team Palestine, how you bowed and thanked not only Team Taiwan, but also the whole audience. And it just with so much love and respect. And I remember Tadek, you put a kufiya on yeah. the coach of Team Taiwan. That For me, that's such a beautiful moment. And um, what significance did you feel playing against a home team here and thinking of the love and respect that you feel? When I, I I wanted to give their 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 manager a kofia uh, as a sign of respect, um, you know, to them, and um, obviously we're here to play baseball, but we're all human beings at the end of the day, and um, you know they they did treat us res with respect, even though we got hammered like you you, you keep saying, and I might have <laughs> I might have a problem with it if you say it again. Okay, but uh, <laughs> yeah. so, sorry, we want we want yeah yeah, yeah. So, it's so, luck it's luck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I still like we held our dignity. Uh, we had guys that made 
unbelievable plays mm-hmm. um, during the game. M- my favorite moment of the game, and I'm a little selfish on this one, was so, you know, again, we're short-staffed. We only yes. have two coaches here. Mm-hmm. Uh, most most teams have six coaches or six staff. Our players have to resort to playing first base coach. And Nether at the time was was he, uh, playing was the first base coach the majority of that game. So he was in the game, and somebody had to go uh, coach first base. And nobody knew what to do. So I'm like, and I'm wearing my kafi on my head. And I, I, they took me out of the game in the second inning to rest up for the next game. So I'm like, you know what? I'll run on there. Mm-hmm. I, put, I threw a helmet on there, ran out there, and, and gave the peace sign to the crowd. They loved it, and they and I'm just hyping them up, and you know, so I saw that. Yeah. I know that they're all here to, to 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 watch a show, so we wanted to at least make it good for them, because I know when I watch a baseball game and I get hammered nineteen yeah. to nothing, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. you know, it's not always the best game to watch, but mm. I think that they still enjoyed it and, and respected us. At, yeah, at they did. Moment. We did. Yeah, I will say that like the baseball culture here to be able to keep a nineteen nothing game interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, but they were all into like every pitch not even yeah. with the score 19 nothing uh trip had dead charles trip had dead one of our best hitters hit a triple and the crowd went nuts for him yeah, even yeah, though yeah. it's team palestine so that respect that they showed us you know you know we avoided getting no hit you know which is huge for us we don't want to go home getting no hit that's <laughs> you know in baseball the worst thing that can happen to a team uh minus a perfect game but so they went crazy for it. They showed us respect the whole game. Yes. So we had to, you know, relay that same respect. Yeah, it was a great game. People love it. And like a highlight that I thought you were going to mention, Tariq. Um, yeah, you want to add something? I did want to add something yes, too. Yes, and, and, and other than the baseball, you know, if we want to get into the, the, the core of, of us as humans, there are a lot of people who don't think Palestine exists or should exist or we're just, you know, Arabs that, just happened to be there. You know, the fact that we were here competing in the largest baseball tournament in the, the, the BFA, uh, the Baseball Federation of Asia, in itself was was very successful for us, a, a huge success for us. You know, as competitors, we never want to lose, let alone, you know, by a large margin like that. Uh, we would have liked to compete a little bit better. But the fact that we did make it here, that we organized this, that, I mean, we had to do so much in order to, to get here uh, was a really, really uh, huge success in, in itself. So uh, aside from baseball, uh, we, we still Palestine still wins here. You put it so beautifully. I have to mention another highlight um, for many of the fans and sports reporters here in Taiwan. I don't know whether you read uh, about this. So in a game against Team Taiwan on December the 5th, the wonderful performance from Yunus Halim. Uh, yes. I catch special attention of sports retor- reporters here, especially the catch during the top of the fifth inning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Beautiful work. So, uh, yeah, reporters are saying he's a strong hitter, also great with defense, and also moves very well. And um, reporters here actually compared Halim's performance, um, outstanding performance, to that of a very well-loved player from Japan, Otani Shohei, who plays for the Los Angeles Angels at the um, MLB. And I also saw your reaction on the highlight video. So could you share with us that moment? And shout out to you, Halim. Oh, 100% shout out to him. <laughs> He is our our Shohei. I mean, obviously, anybody who watches baseball knows Sho, no one, he, Shohei is the Babe Ruth of our era. But this guy does everything for us. And it's not just on the field. It's off the field. He's recruiting mm, players. He's he's making sure guys are showing up to practice. He's Eunice is he's a co-captain, Eunice and Thotic. Eunice, one of the best guys on the team. I might. I should have said he's the coolest guy. Honestly, I messed up. Yeah, no we have a lot of cool guys. Like I'm sorry, yeah, Every, like I, like I was saying earlier. You know, personally, I think everybody's really cool. Yeah, <laughs> but but dude, that catch! Oh, oh my god! <laughs> I watch it. Like, I was I so happy to be on the field. <laughs> if you see during the highlights, I go up there and I celebrate with him. Again, I'm I'm just happy to be in these guys' presence. You know, I'm like enjoying That's how I'm feeling basking now. in their glory and being their teammates <laughs> again another biggest honor of my life but yeah yeah if, if i can add to Eunice, so Eunice is is probably my biggest influence on this team mm-hmm. um 
he's the only Palestinian baseball player that I've ever met before this team. Um, and he was a, a huge part of the, the reason what, what made me want to pursue this. Um, and he deserves absolute all the praise. That's uh, on a baseball uh, level. I mean, he, he can do it all. He really can. Um, mm-hmm. He's a pitcher by trade. But he's so athletic that he can play any position, really. I mean, he you can put him. He's probably the one guy on our team, other than maybe Trip, uh, that can play any position, uh, infield and outfield. Cool. And I, I guarantee you, if we threw him as a catcher, he could figure it out oh, too. He'll figure it yeah. out. <laughs> so, <laughs> he'll figure it out. So, um, <laughs> you know, and another thing about him is, is mm-hmm. uh, you know, as a, as a friend and as a, I've considered him a brother now, you know, and not many people know this, uh, but. When we were preparing to go to Pakistan, I was really weary about it. You know, I have my two young children. I have a career that I need to focus on. And um, it's hard to, to to make that sacrifice to do these kind of things. But when he, he said something to me that I'll never forget, you know, before we went, he goes, listen, man, imagine that the Palestinian national team does go and competes and, and we're not there. And when he said that, I was like, you know what? Like, that's all I need to hear. So that that switched my mind uh, completely. It flipped the switch in my head, and then I really started thinking about the future of what this could be. And um, you know, Eunice will will definitely go down in the history books of Palestinian baseball for sure. Definitely the foundation. Definitely the foundation. And when kids in Palestine are learning baseball, they'll they'll want to be like him. They'll say, I want to play shortstop like him. I want to pitch like him. I want to play outfield like him. Mm-hmm. I want to dedicate myself to this game yeah. like Eunice does. And be a very caring teammate as well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, he cares. That's yeah. it, it, it's. There's no question about his uh, dedication. Yeah, and I remember the commentators. They they all went crazy when he you know figured out that catch. He was like, "Oh my god!" Like we were trying to translate it. Yeah, like in English, like this is like, oh, it's like, oh, it's it's godlike. I can't believe like he <laughs> wow. really he catch it. Oh my, look at this. <laughs> he came out of nowhere too. I mean, yeah. that's just he just willed. Yeah, it. and the I crowd mean, was crazy. It's not like, even ah. his ball. <laughs> it was it was probably the left fielder should yeah. have made that catch. To so be honest, the with camera you, was following him like as he like made his way there, and the commentators like, will, "Will he catch it? Will he catch it? Oh my god, oh, godlike performance!" Yeah. So yeah, I remember that moment very fondly. And yes, I agree. Not this will be a very important page um, of the history of Palestine baseball. It's very important that we talk about not only baseball but also in Palestine and baseball in Palestine and many very important connotations that comes with that. So from what I know so far, as you two mentioned, baseball is a fairly new sport in Palestine, and it didn't really start until 2017, I believe. Yes. Yeah. And basically, um, how the team and individual members happen. I know many of you you have friends and family in Palestine, um, some in Gaza, and some some in the occupied West Bank. How is the baseball scene like in Palestine under occupation? So, uh, baseball is definitely in the absolute grassroots stage in Palestine right now. Um, it started in Gaza, believe it or not. And if I can get into that story a little bit, I will. It's really fascinating, to be honest with mm-hmm. you. Uh, there's a gentleman, and he's actually on this trip with us. Uh, he's uh, from Gaza, but lives in Turkey currently. Mm-hmm. His name is Mahmoud Tafish. And he went to, and it's, it's really a, an amazing story. He went to uh, Turkey one time or somewhere. I, I don't remember exactly what country it was, but was introduced baseball by an Iraqi gentleman. And I uh, said, hey, like, let's bring this sport to the Middle East. You know, let's, there, there's a couple of countries that are already playing it. Mm-hmm. You know, why don't you bring it back to Gaza? So he did. He went back to Gaza. And, uh, you know, they would play, he said, with shovels as base, as bats. Um, and, you know, find any ball that they can get. And didn't really have um, equipment like that. So they make shift gloves, you know shovels yeah. as bats and you know this open field as their first baseball field and also but even just bare hands yeah. yeah yeah and um you know even uh the 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 uh, they started girls programs too that played baseball and Amazing. you know it, they did they they didn't re- they still don't necessarily know the exact rules and the speed of play that you know professionals or high level baseball players play but they you know it is in gaza now so and uh you know once there was uh uh, a gentleman who is our leader currently, his name is uh, uh, Abdul Rahman Al Ghula. 
he realized that there was a baseball federation in Gaza, registered with the BFA, and he knew that there are Palestinians abroad, outside of the Middle East and in Palestine, that um, play baseball. So the stars aligned, really, you know, and by the grace of God, uh, the there was our first ever Palestinian national team formed in, uh, it was earlier this year. Mm-hmm. And our friends from Gaza, uh, including Mahmoud Tafish, who's with us here, his brother Ahmed Tafish, uh, who's the current president of the federation, um, and an additional uh, five, or was it four players? Five players. Five players uh, in addition to them from Gaza. And we've been keeping in touch with them. And, 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 and you know, I'm going to single one out. His name is Mustafa Tafish. Um, he's only, I think, 18 and might have turned 19 by now. Mm. And, you know, we he, we finally got a hold of him the other day. He, he finally messaged back and said uh, that he's okay and that, you know, his fa- his house did get bombed, unfortunately. His aunt passed away, um, including some cousins. And they are, you know, just like every other Gazan right now, not worrying about baseball, but worrying about surviving. And, um, you know, we hope that the conflict ends sooner, as soon as possible. Uh, and there's a ceasefire and, and the Gazans can go back to rebuilding for the fifth time. Um and uh, hopefully Mustafa and, and the rest of our teammates will reunite with us um, to uh, on the baseball field, wherever the next tournament may be. Yeah, and just to add to that, I know I've, I've been keeping up with Mustafa too. And mm. um, Mustafa has lived through five bombardments since he's been born. He can't, and, and that's like why baseball is so hard to build out there. Yeah. How can they focus on, you know, bettering their game? That becomes nonsense when family members are dying yeah. left and right. Uh-huh. So um, I really want them to know that we're always thinking about them and that even though we're playing this game, um, if there wasn't Palestine across our chest right now, we wouldn't be playing baseball. Mm. And that's and reason why we play baseball right now is so that people can read Palestine on our chest and then maybe look into it, maybe speak up for us, maybe speak to their political leaders to call for a ceasefire. We need an yeah. immediate and forever ceasefire. Yeah, and I know for many fans out out here, it probably is their first time really, you know, seeing the name Palestine on athletes, and it means so much to people. And I feel very very lucky that I, you know, I studied abroad and I started reading about Palestine probably around five years ago. And it's very clear. It's very clear, listeners. It's been going on for more than two months and seventy five years. This oppression from the Israeli state. And yeah, really, thank you so much for being here. It's it's a great honor to have both of you here. Thank you. Thank and um, any messages you like to send to friends and family back home, and also to the people of Palestine. We love you. We are Palestine. We're Palestinians. We're in the diaspora. We wish we could be with you. Um, And since we can't be with you, we're going to do what we can. We're going to speak up. We're going to always keep you in our thoughts. And we're always going to bring you up every chance we get. And inshallah, we make you proud when we take the field. And inshallah, you know, when we take the field and we're successful and we win, it gives you a little bit of relief. Inshallah. Um, There's too much, you know... It, it, it's hard to talk about sometimes to be honest with you because um I know, yeah. it's just it's just tough and uh especially uh to the people in Gaza and my teammates there we care about you we do the world does care about you and one day that uh we do we do one day that they, they will taste freedom the way we're blessed to have it and they will, yeah. And I remember many highlights, um, team members, like I think including you both and especially you, Tariq, you, you dedicate, I think it was the first win against Hong Kong. You know, you blow a kiss to the camera saying that this is for Hazza, this is for Palestine. It, it's, it's very moving and it's very important. And um, echoing a former guest of mine, also now I had the pleasure to call a friend, Samia Halabi, the wonderful Palestinian artist. I want to be optimistic. And I really do believe that one day... <laughs> Kids in Palestine, they can play baseball wherever, however they like it. And they can come to Taiwan and they can enjoy whatever their beautiful homes could offer them. You know, and just run free. Yeah. I, I really, I really believe that it will happen. 
Inshallah. Happen. Inshallah. Yes. And, and there's a bunch of amazing Palestinian athletes oh, yeah, that are yeah, born yeah. and raised there and live mm-hmm. there that can possibly yeah. replace us. And that's what we <laughs> that's, that's the goal. That's the goal. I mean, we want to build a, a legitimate uh, national youth program mm-hmm. in, in, in baseball, just like they have it. It's similar to soccer. Uh, we want to be the figureheads to that, and we're run, we're going the right direction. And um, really, just like what we were talking about, you know, when, if if we the one thing that moves us, and not just us, but the entire world, is the children, and uh, they deserve uh, they deserve to have the same uh, freedoms and 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 uh, aspirations and, and 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 the abilities to reach them as we do, as everyone else does. Here, here. And on that note, since you're in Taiwan right now, I have to talk about some of our celebrated players. Too bad most of them. Well, they're all retired right now, but they are players of my generation and um, they're very celebrated. So since we're here, we have to talk about some of them. So sure. first, this guy. Okay. <laughs> Y'all know this guy? Okay. Y'all, <laughs> do you know this guy? Yeah. Okay. This is Jianming Wang. He's uh, most notable for his uh, playing at the New York Yankees. And Wang actually made his MLB debut in 2005. So he is known for his hard sinker. Well, he's a, he's a pitcher. He was one of the best starting pitchers for the Yankees in 2006 to 2007. And, you know, he's very well loved. I remember my sibling and I, we used to just glue ourselves to the TV and just, just to watch his games. But um, at one point, he cheated on his wife. So um, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Oh, but also, it's an important lesson for the kids out there. You know, think about an athlete's achievements versus their private life. I think both are very important to think about. Okay, moving on. <laughs> yes. And uh, while Wang is not the first Taiwanese player to make his way to the MLB, he was actually the third. So that was followed by Dodgers outfielder Jing Feng Chen and Colorado Rockies pitcher Jing Hui Cao. So um, Jianming Wang was, was the third one. Okay, moving on. This guy. So this is Hong Zhi Guo, as you can tell from the jersey he's wearing. So he's most notably known for playing for the Los Angeles Dodgers from 2005 to 2011. He's a very sharp pitcher, very clever, very smart, and he was also the first ever Taiwanese baseball player to be in the MLB All-Star game. So, yeah, nice. also like awesome. this guy a lot. Yeah, from what we know, he didn't cheat on anyone, so uh, that's good. <laughs> that's and um, so the last guy, well, he is not from Taiwan, but I just want to talk about him for a sec. Do we know this guy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, uh, he was with the Cubs, uh, the 2016 World Series team, but didn't make it to the 25-man roster. I know he's Japanese. Yes, he's from Japan, so he's Kawasaki. Kawasaki. Yeah. I was going to say yes. Suzuki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's before. Close enough, close that's before. Okay, so this is the wonderful Kawasaki or Kawa, as you know, known Kawa, by yeah. many of his fans out there. I love his interviews. Highly recommend both of you and listeners out there to go look up his interviews. Yeah, and, uh, the, bana- he- the, <laughs> b- the banana one is very good. We should all eat more bananas, um, <laughs> too, because um, monkeys, is the monkeys, the- monkeys never craps. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because uh, monkey never craps. All right. Uh, <laughs> Nader, Tariq, it's been a great, great pleasure for me to have both of you here. And I know right after this interview, you're um, going to prepare your game later against Pakistan. That's a very strong team. You know, it's going to be a tough game. I, I can see it. I can feel it. And all the best. And it's been a great pleasure. I really do hope. I feel like we will see each other again, Definitely. wherever that is. And thank you so much for being here with us. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank we you. We appreciate you.